Well, good afternoon. I'm reading from Romans chapter 13, verses 1 to 7. Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, he who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right, and he will commend you. For he is God's servant to do you good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword for nothing. He is God's servant, an agent of wrath, to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also because of conscience. This is also why you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants, who give their full time to governing. Give everyone what you owe him. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honour, then honour. Well, members of St Stephen's, good to be able to share with you again. I've just been up at the church with some of the ladies who have been preparing and we've been recording uh, for the, uh, the service on Sunday, uh, some of the preparation of the readings and so on. And while I was there, I also have recorded another stained glass window uh, devotional, which uh, no doubt you'll see in due course, will be online. But I wanted to uh, take this opportunity today to uh, share with you about a, uh, from the, from the On This Day uh, daily devotions about history, about a lady who uh, spurs us on in a sense of conviction uh, and following through on our faith. Yesterday I mentioned uh, the, oh by the way, before I go on, I do want to uh, send particular birthday greetings uh, to Gail, our neighbour, and who we've had on our prayer list. Uh, Gail, I know it's a special birthday for you. Happy birthday to you uh, from uh, your brothers and sisters here at St Stephen's Bellevue Hill and we do pray that's a, a wonderful day for you and uh, we give thanks to God uh, for his gracious hand over your life and the blessing of sharing with you and we rejoice with you as you celebrate today. Happy birthday Gail. Uh, yesterday in the, uh, uh, the words that I shared in the devotional I made mention of a movie and I'm not sure if I got the movie's name right, but the, it was meant to be uh, Just Mercy. And uh, in that movie, there is a quote along these lines uh, from, uh, from the main uh, people in the film, Brian Stevenson. We can't change the world with only ideas in our minds. We need conviction in our hearts. And it is that conviction theme that I'm going to be picking up in a few moments. But apparently he presented to the US Senate hearing on the death penalty and had uh, words which I came across, I believe this is the quote, I'm happy to be corrected but I know it's certainly attributed to him and I'm pretty sure it's relation to that hearing. He said, I came out of law school with grand ideas in my mind about how to change the world. But Mr Macmillan made me realise we can't change the world with only ideas in our minds, we need conviction in our hearts. This man taught me how to stay hopeful because I now know that hopelessness is the enemy of justice. Hope allows us to push forward even when the truth is distorted by the people in power. It allows us to stand up when they tell us to sit down and to speak when they say be quiet. Through this work I've learned that each of us is more than the worst thing that we've ever done. That's the opposite of poverty uh, that the opposite of poverty isn't wealth. The opposite of, the opposite of poverty is justice. That the character of our nation isn't reflected in how we treat the rich and the privileged, but how we treat the poor, the disfavoured and the condemned. Our system has taken more away from this innocent man 
than it has the power to give back. But I believe if each of us can follow his lead, we can change this world for the better. If we look at ourselves closely and honestly, I believe we will see that we all need justice. We all need mercy. And perhaps we all need some measure of unmerited grace. Thank you. He concluded. Stirring words. Well, this day, 29th of April, <clears throat> the heading is Death by Exhaustion. Giacomo Benincasa, dyer of fabrics in Siena, Italy, named his 23rd child Catherine. And no, that's not the reason for the exhaustion, but 23rd. Their house sat on a hillside, the basement containing dye rooms, D-Y-E. Atop the hill sat the church of St. Dim Dominic, over which, when Catherine was seven, she saw a vision of Jesus. From that day, she yearned to serve Christ. At age 12, she so resisted her father's pressure to marry that he said, May God preserve us, dearest daughter, from trying to set ourselves against the will of God. We have long seen that it was no childish whim of thine, and now we know clearly that it is the Spirit of God. He gave her a room near his die quarters, and there Catherine made herself a chapel. Catherine's personality burned like a knife, and she soon inserted herself without invitation into community and church affairs, becoming the most outspoken Italian woman of the Middle Ages. She railed against the death sentence, <clears throat> interesting connection, she railed against the death sentence of a young man convicted of criticising the government, and she accompanied him to his execution, snapping up his decapitated head and arousing public protest. She cared for prisoners. When the Black Death swept Italy, Catherine was everywhere giving aid. Catherine fumed and strawned about corruption in the church. She denounced materialism and immorality in the monasteries. Remember, this is well before uh, the Protestant Reformation. We're in the year 1380 or so. She, uh, in her denouncing, she said, those who should be the temples of God are the tables of swine. She fired letters like missiles, keeping three secretaries busy at a time. She told Pope Gregory it would be better for him to resign than to founder and do not be a boy, but a man. Well, that's still in the Pope, isn't it? She negotiated peace treaties. She was instrumental in moving the papacy from France back to Rome. It's no wonder that on April 29th, 1380, she died at age 32 of exhaustion from these and other labors. Her last words, Dear children, let not my death sadden you. Rather rejoice that I am leaving a place of many suffering to be united forever with my most sweet and loving bridegroom. Well, next to St. Francis, Catherine of Siena is indeed the most celebrated of the Italian saints, concludes Robert Morgan. And he has Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Don't get tired of helping others. You will be rewarded when the time is right if you don't give up. We should help people whenever we can, especially if they are followers of the Lord. Well, let us come before the Lord in prayer. And today I'm focusing particularly on this theme of being committed the sense of conviction linked in with justice, justice in the city, and hence the reading from Romans chapter 13. We're going to look at rulers, responsibilities, regulations, revenue, and respect, again, using the format of things to pray for your city. Let us pray. The authorities that exist have been established by God, said Paul in Romans 13. Our cities are the places, Lord, where authority is seated, and you, Lord God, establish all authority. 
We thank you, Lord God, for the gift of rulers, kings, queens, national government and local representatives. And we thank you, Lord, for our own uh, constitution. We remember our sovereign with thankfulness, Queen Elizabeth. We pray for those who lead us in government, our Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, our Premier Gladys Berejiklian. We remember the Governor-General, the Governor, and we pray for all in authority in our city, in our state, in our country, Australia, that they would indeed honour you, Lord, in all that they do. We pray for those who rule us. And Paul writes in verse 3, Do what is right and you will be commended. We pray for us as citizens, Lord. We pray as citizens, knowing that you have called us to obey the law of the land, even though we are citizens of your eternal kingdom. Lord, there may be times when we need to petition, to debate and urge our leaders to change. But we pray, Lord, that as your people, we would always be committed to acting in ways that are legal and upright. We continue to pray for regulate the area of regulations in verse 4. Those in authority are God's servants, agents of wrath, to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Lord, we pray for those who write our laws and those who enforce them. We remember politicians, civil servants, those who serve in the police force financial authorities, members of the judiciary and all who support them. Heavenly Father, we pray for good laws. We pray that those who serve in these ways would act in ways that are above reproach and uphold justice in your city. We pray, Lord, that our city would not be marked by corruption, that you would rid us of evil. And so we pray for honesty and for integrity amongst those who serve in these ways. In Jesus' name. Amen. What about revenue? Paul says in verse 6, This is also why you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. Heavenly Father, we pray to you. Few of us do enjoy paying taxes, but we know this money can achieve extraordinary good as it provides education, protection and more. And we're very mindful, Lord, of the government's enormous contribution to our life, our society, our community, our country in this massive economic crisis that we are facing. We thank you, Lord, for those in authority and we pray for wisdom. We thank you, Lord, for the decisions that have been made in the use of our government funds in supporting people, mindful of the huge economic change and downturn that has occurred. We pray, Father, that those in authority would indeed spend taxes wisely. We pray at this time, as thought has been given, as to how our economic our structures can be changed and established. We pray you give wisdom to those in authority in these matters. And Lord, we ask that you help us, help all believers to be diligent and joyful in paying that which is due in line with the Apostles' instruction here in Romans 13. And finally, in verse 7, Paul says, Well, I came back and checked uh, the video recording and found that the final section of my prayer had been cut off, had for some reason, the video had stopped. So I went out and recorded it two more times without success, including one time where I had no head. And so I've retreated indoors and I'll close with this final prayer. Perhaps a fourth time, maybe the Lord wanted me to particularly pray this prayer because it's one we need to pray. It's praying for respect for those who lead us. Give to everyone, said Paul, what you owe them. If respect, then respect. If honour, then honour. Heavenly Father, it is easy to mock politicians and to criticise those who lead and govern us, particularly in 
issues involving the law. We know, Lord, that, of course, each man and woman is fallible, but we nonetheless are still called to respect those who lead us. And so we ask that you would forgive us for ways in which we have fallen short in this area. And Lord, I ask and pray that as Christian believers, that we in the church would choose our words wisely and honour, wisely and honour those who lead us. Father, give us grace in the way we speak about those who govern us. We thank you, Father, for the country in which we live and for our leaders. And we pray for each other in the words of the grace. Please join me. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Well, I'm hoping that recorded. I think I'll be going and uh, picking up my uh, Baz Luhrmann production videos for dummies. Uh, book and checking it all out, what's going on, but been good to share again with you. Lord bless.